folks. John here, I'll take three forwards. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. What's going on today? I'm down here in the workshop and uh, we're going for part two of the Gladius build. So if you want to check it out, stick around. So if you saw part one of the video, that's where we forged out the blade, did the rough grind, and went ahead and ended the video doing the quench. The quench appears to have gone well. I didn't feel any cracks. I don't see any, but I don't know if you can see or not. There is a it's not like a huge warp, but it's enough of a warp to where it's got to be fixed before we can keep going. There's not enough meat to get it out on the grinder. So we're going to try to fix that during the temper, see what we can do. And then uh, we'll make the handle, finish grind the blade, give it the acid bath to bring out that real nice Damascus pattern, and we'll see what we got. So getting the sword clamped up straight to do the temper, just wanted to show you a little bit of a better look at that warp. See, we got the tang clamp flat and all that space we got in there. So we're going to clamp the whole piece flat. We're going to do a torch temper where we're going to put heat into the middle of the blade and try to get it to a nice royal blue. What about a dark straw on the edges? Hopefully that gets it straight enough to where we can fix it by tweaking it while it's warm. Uh, hopefully it doesn't just, you know, break like the Senate did when Caesar crossed the Rubicon. But uh, let's see what we can do. Alrighty, got our sword clamped up straight. It's looking good. Got the cutting torch here. We're going to put some heat into the center. Got a spray bottle here to keep it from bleeding into the edges too fast. We're going to bring the tang as well as about the first inch of the blade all the way back to a nice blue, make those good and springy. And uh, hopefully that fixes the warp and gives us a good strong blade. So, just working my way up the blade a little bit at a time. Kind of moving the clamps out of my way as need be. Trying to get as uniform of a temper as I can. Go to it, really. So here we are to the first temper cycle. Warp is still there. It's not as bad as it was, but it is still there. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to clean the scale off so I can see good metal. We're going to clamp it to the uh, angle iron again and do another temper cycle, this time from the other side. And hopefully that fixes it. I really don't want to have to tweak this thing in the vise by hand. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep moving. That ain't bad at all. There's still a little bit of space right there and right there, but that's because the sword is a little bit thinner in those spots. And I, got, I can fix that in the grind, but all in all, I'd say we're good to keep moving. All right, so we got the warp out, but to make sure the temper is good, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and check for flex in the sword. If this was a longer sword, I would try to go a lot further, but because it's such a short sword, it was meant to be primarily kind of used for thrusting and should by nature be a stiffer blade. We're just going to flex it to about 25 degrees or so in each direction. Should spring back to true and without taking any set so uh we're good to keep moving so real quick i'm just checking the sword with uh the rock wall testing files to see where we are as far as rock wall hardness we got a 55 hrc right here skates over the edge and it bites in the middle of the sword here we got a 50 skates in the middle of the sword so i put the core of the sword somewhere around like 51 52 rock well and the edge somewhere around 56. The 60 file bites the whole edge, no problem. So it's nowhere close to 60. So I'd say like 56 on the edge approximately and approximately 52 in the center. So uh, should be good to go. Go ahead and touch mark the piece that's gonna be the guard. Perfect. Alrighty, got the blade seated into the guard. It's actually on there backwards. So it's not sitting where it's actually gonna be. That's why it looks kind of wonky. But that's fine for what I need. I just wanted to get the profile I want to make for the guard itself marked out. I figured I'd go ahead and tell you why it is I'm not going to etch this wrought iron. Now, there were different grades of wrought iron that were available to smiths back in the day. The more refined it is, the less interesting the grain pattern is. And this stuff here is really, really refined. There's very little grain when it's acid etched. Also, I kind of like that aged texture in there. And also, I don't want anything to draw the eye away from the finished Damascus on the blade. So we're just going to leave black oxide on the fittings. So after uh, after they're ground to shape, we'll throw them back in the forge, stick them in some linseed oil to uh, to blacken them again. And that's how they'll look. I just want to do it, you know, people were probably going to wonder why I didn't edge the wrought iron, but that's why. So let's keep moving. Alrighty, we got our guard roughed out. Now it's time to start working on the uh, first wooden bit of the handle. Now, your guard... 
your metal and your wood both have to be perfectly flat. And when a lot of times when you buy turning stock, it's got this wax on it that it keeps it from drying too fast when it's on the shelf. And that's not a flat surface, so that can lie to you about your fit up. So first thing we're going to do is run this baby through the table saw and take a blade off it so we get a relatively flat surface to work with. Surface grinder will be nice to have, but I ain't got one. So then we'll dress up that fit right there, cut off the excess, and drill some holes and start broaching this baby. I was hoping that would make the guard fit up look better, but now it actually looks worse. <laughs> so we're going to go through, keep working on sanding this thing flat until we get a nice fit, and uh, we'll go from there. That ain't terrible. Alrighty, going ahead and marked out where we need to get our holes drilled. And then we'll go through with a tool called a brooch and uh, you know get that uh, get that material hogged out, get it fitting on the tang of the sword real nice. If you don't have one of these, get one. They're freaking amazing. So, got our holes drilled. As you can see, we don't really have a good clean slot. This is where the brooch comes in. You just stick that baby in there and pull it towards you and it'll cut the material out of there. It's pretty cool how fast it actually works. It's just as fast as doing a burn-in and you end up with a much cleaner, nicer slot. So I'm pretty happy with this thing. Like I said, you just stick that baby in there and pull it towards you. Another two, really. See, got a real nice slot in there. That took maybe 10 minutes. Uh, if you want to get one of those brooches, check out Texas Farrier Supply. They're not paying me or anything. I just wish I'd have had one of those years ago, and I want to save you guys the trouble. But uh, we'll get the guard on, put that block of wood on, shape them out together so the edges fit together real nice, and uh, we'll keep working our way down. So before I go any further, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and make the middle piece of the handle. We're going to be using uh, a piece of ebony for that. We're going to go through with the miter saw, cut one end off so it's nice and square, cut out four inches. I want it to fit the hand nice and snug. And we'll get that shaped out and where it needs to be before we start messing with this because the ends of that have to mate up with that. And if I take too much material off this right now, there's not going to be any way to fix it. The pommel, I got another piece of paddock. I had a uh, friend of mine from the woodworking store turn it down on his lathe for me. That's going to be our pommel. We'll set our peen block over that. Peen all that up and we'll have a sword. So we got the outline of our tang drawn onto our block. Same deal, we'll drill it out broach it out till it fits. This is going to take a little longer because ebony is a tougher wood than paddock and because it's just a longer piece to work with. That's what's happening now. So, a bit of an issue I'm having. As you can see, our, uh, our block of ebony isn't quite all the way up to our wooden bolster, but we're already, it's kind of hard to get on camera, but after getting the tang in there, there's really not going to be a lot of material left to sculpt out the handle, and I really don't want to hog any more out. So what I think I might do, I've got more tang than I need, so I might come in here and uh, narrow it up, kind of starting inside this upper bolster, and make it a little easier to fit up and give me a little more material to work with making the contours of the handle. See what I'm talking about? With, uh, with the way the tang is sitting now, we just don't have a lot of material on the top and bottom to make the finger groove, so I, I don't want to really go any further. Now, over here, I've marked out where we're going to take material from the tang. This line is the bottom of our wooden bolster. So we're just going to come in here, and uh, we don't got to take much, maybe an eighth of an inch total, and that should give us everything we need. So I took as much off the tang as I'm really willing to take. We still got space on the top as well as the bottom. So what that tells me is rather than having a straight channel in there, we kind of got an hourglass shape. So to fix it, we'll take an angle of the brooch and kind of use the point of it to scrape the material from the middle of the channel out. It doesn't got far to go, so I'm just gonna do a little bit on all four sides and check it and recheck it until it's where I want it. Now we're talking, alrighty, now we will repeat that exact same process with the pommel. Alrighty, we got the slot for the tang and all our pieces. Now it's time to actually shape out the handle. So I've given myself some rough lines to work with, you know, nothing too crazy, but uh, we'll take it apart grind on it, check it as we go back and forth, back and forth until we got a nice feeling handle. Alrighty, that's about as far as I'm comfortable going on the grinder. We'll do the rest by hand. But uh, now it's time to finish grinding the blade. All right, before I finish grinding the blade, I'm gonna go ahead and fix the peen block. 
needs to be filed out a little bit and it needs to be uh you know ground down to like a circular shape to where it looks good with the rest of the handle but it's coming together there we go now we can finish grinding the blade so this is a pretty challenging blade to grind if i'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about what it is i'm doing i'm kind of having to work in sections you know because this blade is different widths all up and down you have to come at it at different angles to ensure a flat primary bevel now we're just eyeballing the edge thickness as we go i'll measure it when we get a little closer but around here we got what looks to be around 20 thousandths and up here at the tip we probably got around 50 thousandths so there's a good bit of material up here that needs to be removed but that's all that's happening now we got to bring that edge thickness down make everything flat get the medial ridge trued up uh, not a whole lot of material to remove then we'll take it up the grits Get it ready for the acid bath. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking the distal taper of the blade as well as the cutting edge thickness. We want the center of the blade to be the thickest down here and to gently taper as we go up. But we do want a relatively uniform cutting edge thickness to make it cut well. That's why I was saying you kind of have to grind from different angles with different widths of the blade. So right here we got 200 thousandths. Up here we got 179 thousandths. Our cutting edge right down here we got 22 thousandths. And up here we got 24 thousandths. So we need to take a little bit more material from right there and a little bit more from right down there. But it's coming along. Alrighty, taking a little more. Let's check it again. Here in the center, 190 thousandths. 183 thousandths and 175 thousandths. So we got a nice taper in the center of the blade of the cutting edges. We got 21 thousandths, 20 thousandths, and 22 thousandths. So the entirety of the edge is within what I would consider to be a pretty good tolerance for about two thousandths of an inch. So now we'll go ahead and take it up the grits and uh, start getting this baby polished out. Alrighty, here we are after taking it to 220 and then a scotch bright belt to get a nice satin. I can't resist, let's etch this thing. So, I'm a very happy man right now for two reasons. One, that pattern is beautiful. And two, if there were micro cracks that we couldn't see before, the acid bath is what will bring them out. So we're looking really, really good. We'll go a lot deeper for the final etch. That was only one 15 minute etching cycle. But uh, we'll keep moving. Freaking awesome. Alrighty, so now I got the uh, hilt of the sword mocked up. I got it held on there with a little clamp. So what I'll do now is I'll go through and hand sand all the fittings, contour everything to where it all looks nice, fits good together. Take it apart, do the file work on the fittings, blacken the fittings, and then uh, give the sword the acid bath and we're ready for vinyl assembly. So moving right along, getting the handle pieces uh, sanded down. As you can see, those two aren't flush and we can't go any further because there's a cut mark, you know, exposed. If we keep sanding into that, we're gonna basically expose the, uh, the slot inside the block. That won't do it all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remake this piece real quick. Alrighty. I spared you the pain of watching me remake the bolster, but it's done. Got the handle mocked up, it's looking good. So next thing, we'll do the file, the file work on the fittings, get the fittings darkened, and uh, keep moving. We're almost done with this thing. So, while the sword's in the acid bath, I'm just taking the fittings, thermal cycling them a few times, and taking a brush to them. Whenever they cool down, we oil them while they're still a little warm. This will give us a real nice, smooth, black surface finish. Doesn't look too horrible, I think. It's hard to get the whole blade in frame, but here's where we're sitting after two 20-minute etching cycles. Need to clean it up a little more, but it's looking pretty good. Uh, next step is to go ahead and sharpen this thing before uh, we put it all together.
So here we are doing a dry fit and making sure everything's going to fit together real nice before we uh, put any epoxy on it. Luckily, I happen to have a clamp big enough to put this entire sword in. So what I got here, scrap chunk of two by four with a three quarter inch hole. We're going to use that to apply pressure on the back. Got a piece of scrap wood super glued to the end of that clamp. And uh, basically we'll just fill, mix up a whole big batch of epoxy, put the pieces on one at a time, clamp it up and then uh, go to lunch. Alrighty, got this baby clamped up. I didn't film the assembly because the grinder's in the way. I wouldn't have been able to get a good angle, but you get the gist of it. So I'm going to go get some lunch while that epoxy sets up. Whenever we get back, we'll cut the excess off the tang, paint it, clean all this crap off of here. This thing's near about done. It's looking real good. Alrighty, the epoxy's set up. Now it's time to peen the tang. Because the only uh, thing I've got to act as a heat sink is this little peen block right here. We can't heat this and peen it. It's got to be done cold. So I got this little tiny ball peen hammer, and we're just going to go out this for however long it takes us to peen this down. So, just going to go through, sand off all the dried up epoxy, make sure all the seams are sitting together real nice. Just be careful not to damage your fittings, because, uh, you know, if you do at this point, there's no way to fix it. But, nothing to it, really. So you like that. Lighting is kind of crappy in here. That's why I did some close-ups of the sword outside to kind of show you the finer details. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way it came out, especially for the third sword I've ever made. Blade's 21 and a half inches. Total length is 30 and a half inches. Weight is two pounds, three ounces. Balance point is right there. So about two inches in front of the guard. So feels really, really good in the hand. I'm not gonna do any cutting or testing with it or anything because this is not my sword. Let me explain. So if you've been around the channel, you know I like to do charity builds. It's been a while since I've gotten to do one because I've been so busy. That, paired with it being November here in the U.S. on November 11th, we celebrate Veterans Day. The rest of the world celebrates it as Armistice Day because it's the day World War I ended, but here in the U.S. it's Veterans Day. I was actually hoping to get this video done and uploaded then, but uh, their thing took a long time to make. But anyway, so this sword is going to be raffled off. We're going to do 100 slots, $10 a piece. I'll, there'll be a link to my PayPal in the description below. Send it friends and family so we don't have to take fees out of the donation money. Uh, I figure up the sword will bring in $1,000. We'll discount whatever it takes to ship it, take that away, and the rest is going to be donated to Mission 22. They're an organization dedicated to fighting veteran suicide, which is uh, it's a pretty big problem here in the U.S., the most recent statistics available as of 2017 state that it's around 17 veterans a day take their own lives. So, you know, it's a personal subject for me and it's a cause that's very dear to me personally. So <laughs> I just thought that'd be a good place for the money from the sword to go. So uh, if you want to get in, just uh, click the PayPal link, send me however much with how many slots you want. Like if you want five slots, send 50 bucks. There's no limit. And uh, whenever all 100 slots are full, we'll pick a winner at random live here on the channel. I'm going to mention this on the Facebook and Instagram as well, as well as keep the list of everybody who's in on the raffle updated. So there's that. So if you want to get in on the sword, you know what to do. You can win it for as little as 10 bucks. But that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. There's links to the other social media if you want to follow me, links to the Etsy if you want to purchase any work, and links to the Patreon if you want to become a patron. Speaking of which, December's quarterly Patreon giveaway is coming up in a few weeks, so be looking out for that. But uh, that's all I got for you, and uh, y'all take care.